हे एवरीबडी दिस इज ब्रजेश हियर माई डियर फ्रेंड्स यू माइट हैव हार्ट गवर्नमेंट स्लोगन टैक्स भरो और चैन की नींद सो बट वैन यू एक्चुअली डिडक्ट टैक्स एंड डिपॉजिट दैट टू गवर्नमेंट देन आपकी रातों की नींद उठ जाती है बिकॉज टी डी एस अंडर इनकम टैक्स एक्ट इज रियली टी डी एस फॉर टैक्स पेयर्स चैनल आपने सब्सक्राइब कर ही दिया होगा अगर आपने अभी तक इस चैनल को सब्सक्राइब नहीं किया है तो अभी सब्सक्राइब करके बेल आइकन बटन को दबा दीजिए जिससे आगे आने वाले सभी वीडियोस के अपडेट आपको टाइमली मिलते रहें और यह आपके लिए बिल्कुल फ्री है नाउ इट इज इनकम टैक्स डिपार्टमेंट इज वेरी फ्रीक्वेंटली इशूंग नोटिस अंडर सेक्शन टू और 206C7 of the income tax act these notices are mainly for short deduction and short payment or non deduction of tax at source further the entire expenses on which you were liable to deduct tds is also disallowed under income tax if tds is either not deducted or short deducted honorable supreme court decided the issue of deduction of tds on payment to transporters and related disallowance of expenses under section 40a ia of the income tax act in civil appeal number 7865 stroke 2009 in the case of shri chaudhary transport company versus ito on 29 july 2020 this is a landmark judgment in respect of tds on payment to transporters and related issues under income tax act and various important principles are pronounced by the honorable supreme court which will go a long way how you have to deduct and deposit the tds i shall be discussing the various aspects relating to applicability of tds in general and on transport contract in particular and the disallowance of expenses if the tds is either not deducted or short deducted or after deduction not deposited with government within the statutory time limit given under the income tax act keep watching this video till end in order to understand the various important aspects of the tds in general and on transport contract in particular under income tax act first of all i shall be discussing with you the facts and background of this case for your easy understanding the same high court of rajasthan at jodhpur summarily dismissed the appeal against the order dated 29th August 2008 passed in ITA number 117 JU 2008 by ITAT Jodhpur and thereby the High Court has upheld the computation of total income of the assessee for the assessment year 2005-06 with disallowance of payment to the tune of rupees 57 lakh 11,625 in terms of section 40IA of the Income Tax Act 1961 for failure of the assessee to deduct the requisite tax at source. the fact of the case are that the assessee a partnership firm entered into contract with messrs aditya cement limited sambhupura district chittorgarh here in after referred to as company or consignor company for transporting cement to various places in india as the assessee was not having the transport vehicles of its own it engaged the services of other transporters for this purposes the cement marketing division of aditya cement limited namely grasim industries limited made payments towards transportation charges to the assessee after due deduction of tds as shown in form number 16a issued by the company on 28th october 2005 the assessee filed its return for the assessment year 2005 6 showing total income of rupees 289633 arising out of the business of the transport contract in the course of assessment proceedings the ao examined the dispatch register maintained by the assessee for the period from 1st of april 2004 to 31st of march 2005 containing all particulars as regards the truck hire date of hire bilty and chalan numbers freight and commission charges net amount payable the dates on which the payments were made and the destination of each truck 
the contents of the register also indicated that each truck was sent only to one destination under one chalan or belti and if one truck was hired again it was sent to the same or other destination or trip as per separate chalan or belti the commission charged by the assessee from the truck operator or owner ranged from rupees 100 to rupees 250 per trip on verifying the contents of the record placed before him the ao observed that while making payment to the truck operator or owner the assessee had not deducted tax at source even if the net payment exceeded rupees 20000 following this a notice dated 5 november 2007 was issued to the assessee requiring him to furnish the details of amount paid to the truck operators or owners tds thereupon and date of depositing the same in the government account in reply by its letter dated 12th november 2007 and 15th november 2007 the assessee contended that trucks hired were belonging to different operators or owners who were not the subcontractor or contractor that they came from different parts of india and mostly required cash payment for diesel and other running expenses that the assessee had no liability to deduct tax at source because it had not made payments exceeding rupees 20000 in a single transaction and that the provisions of section 40 aia were not applicable to the assessee while finalizing the assessment order dated 22nd november 2007 the ao observed that payments to different truck operators or owners were made directly by assessee firm and not the consignor company that assessee firm was responsible for transportation of goods of company as per the contract for which the assessee received payment from company after tax being deducted at source therefrom the ao also observed that assessee firm paid freight charges to truck operators or owners from income so earned and remaining amount was shown as commission looking to the nature of the dealings of the parties the ao observed that there existed a contract between the assessee and the truck operators or owners in respect of e chalan or bilti for transportation the ao also referred to the circular number 715 dated 8th august 1995 issued by the cbdt to observe that each goods receipt could be considered a separate contract while further observing that a contract may be written or oral the ao held that when the truck operators or owners in the case at hand were not to be considered as contractor they were undoubtedly the subcontractor the ao also pointed out that despite sufficient opportunity being given a copy of the agreement of the assessee firm with the company for providing transportation services was not furnished the ao held the assessee's responsibility for deducting tax at source while making payment to the truck operators or owners where such payment exceeded rupees 20000 on a single bilti or chalan or good receipt that the dispatch register of the assessee firm as well as the cash book clearly establish beyond doubt that payments to the truck operator was made by the assessee firm in other words the assessee firm was the person responsible for deducting the tax at source therefrom within the meaning of section 194c of the act since the goods were transported by trucks and every truck transported goods under a separate bilti and chalan to a particular destination there was a contract or subcontract between the assessee firm and the truck operator as per the provisions of section 194c of the act and board circular number 715 and the assessee should have deducted tax at source while making payment to the truck operators as per the provisions of section 194c3 of the act where the amount of any sum credited or paid or likely to be credited or paid to the account of or to the contractor or sub contractor exceeds rupees 20000 that 
in view of the provisions of section 194c of the act the ssc was liable to deduct tax at source while making payment to truck owners or operators where such payment exceeded rupees 20000 on the basis of single billty or chalan or gr held by the ao after examining the details contained in the dispatch register cash book and payment vouchers the ao found that tax was not deducted at source by the ssc while making payment to the truck operators or owners even though the payment under a single goods receipt that is chalan or billty exceeded the sum of rupees 20000 thereupon the ssc was called upon to explain as to why deduction claimed on account of such payment from the income be not disallowed in terms of section 40 aia of the act in the order of assessment the ao took note of and dealt with various submissions made on behalf of the ssc in this regard that since the ssc failed to deduct the tax at source while making payment to the truck owners or operators exceeding rupees 20000 the ssc was asked to explain as to why deduction claimed on account of such payments from the income be not disallowed within the meaning of section 40a ia of the act the learned counsel of the ssc firm stated that there was no payment exceeding rupees 20000 in this regard he furnished photocopy of extract of cash book and also payment vouchers which indicate that each payment exceeding rupees 20000 was shown in the cash book in two parts though paid on the same date and the ssc made two separate vouchers for such payment just to give an impression that payment to truck owners or operators was not exceeding rupees 20000 the eo observed in this regard it is pertinent to mention that merely by showing payment of one chalan or billty in two pieces the ssc cannot absolve itself of the provisions of section 40 aia in as much as section 194 c3i clearly speaks of the amount of any sum credited or paid or likely to be credited or paid to the account of or to the contractor or subcontractor if such sum does not exceed 20000 rupees the ao observed the learned counsel for ssc further submitted that the receipts of the ssc firm are fully vouched and verifiable and subject to tds and the payments to truck owners or operators are made by the ssc firm from such receipts and as such there is no need for further tds he further stated that the ssc firm prepares bills for claiming payment from the company on the basis of freight charges payable to various truck owners or operator and when the payment is received on the basis of such bills further payment is made to the truck owners or operators and nominal commission is retained by the ssc and therefore the payment made to the truck owners or operators was out of the purview of section 194c of the act the learned counsel for ssc further stated that it is not practical to deduct tax at source while making payment to a truck owner or operator because no truck owner accepts payment after tds the eo held that this argument put forth on behalf of the ssc firm is not acceptable in as much as section 194c1 clearly says that any person responsible for paying any sum to any resident since the ssc firm was responsible for making payment to the truck owners or operators it was mandatory on the part of the ssc to deduct tax at source while making such payment the eo held further there is no direct nexus between the company and the truck owners or operators it cannot be said that the ssc firm was a mediator between the company and the truck owners or operators and finalized the assessment and held considering the provisions of section 194c section 40 aia and board circular number 715 dated 8 august 1995 the payment made to the truck owners or operators exceeding to rupees 20000 without deduction of tax at source is disallowed 
and added back to the total income the of the SSE firm, which works out to rupees fifty seven lakh eleven thousand six twenty five. The SSE has shown commission income of rupees six lakh twenty three thousand three hundred, on which net profit of rupees two lakh eighty nine thousand six ninety four has been shown, giving net profit rate of forty six point four seven percent. As again, net profit rate of fifty point nine one percent declared in the immediate preceding year, in the commission income of rupees six lakh four hundred fifty, the net profit rate declared this year is on a lower side. The you held. Now, I shall be discussing with you what happened before CITA. In this case, agreed by the order of the AO, the SSE preferred an appeal before the CITA that was considered and dismissed. On 15 January 2008, the CITA re-examined the record and rejected the contentions of the SSE that it had only received commission income and was not liable to deduct tax at source on payment made to the truck owner, and held that the SSE entered into a contract for transportation of goods that is cement, Aditya Cement Limited, in order to honor the contract. The SSE hired various trucks all throughout the year for the purpose of transportation of cement. The SSE received freight charges from Aditya Cement Limited, on which tax was deducted. The SSE paid freight charges to individual truck owners after transportation of. There was no nexus between the truck owners or operators and Aditya Cement Limited. How the SSE transported the goods? That cement was the exclusive domain of the SSE. Under such circumstances, the gross freight received by the SSE from Aditya Cement Limited represents gross income of the SSE firm. Since the SSE made payments to various truck owners or operators, such payments represent expenditure. That the payments to the truck owners or operators were made only after the goods were transported. By them satisfactorily at the given destinations. In other words, there existed a contract or subcontract between the SSE firm and the transporters. Under such circumstances, the SSE was required to deduct tax at source on the payments made to truck drivers or owners within the meaning of the provisions of Section 40 AIA. Read with Section 194C of the Act, the CIT held, under no circumstances it can be said that the SSE only received commission income, and therefore provisions of Section 194C are not applicable. In regard to the contention that the SSE was not required to deduct tax at source when no payment exceeded rupees twenty thousand, the CIT found the SSE had. For its convenience and to avoid the rigors of Section 40A3 of the Act, choose to split the payments into two parts. But the entries of such split payments were available consecutively in the cash book. Thus, while not accepting such methodology, the CITA observed that even in the split payments, it was requirement of the SSE. To deduct tax at the time of making final payment. The relevant observation of the CITA is that the SSE made payments in a manner according to which individual payment to the truck owners did not exceed rupees twenty thousand. The payment was split into two parts. However, the total amount paid to the truck owners for individual contract exceeded rupees twenty thousand. It is the argument of the SSE that since the individual payment did not exceed rupees twenty thousand, the provisions of Section one ninety four C are not applicable. CIDA observed that both the entries are consecutive in the cash book, and it observed that the SSE, for its convenience and to avoid rigors of the provisions of Section forty eight three, split the payment into two parts. Had the payment been made really in two parts, both the entries should not have been consecutive. It is also not understood as to why the truck owners, after completing the contract, would accept the amount in two parts, and why 
they would come to the office of the SSC twice for seeking the payment. The CITA observed, the theory of making payment in two parts is merely a story which is capable neither on the facts nor on practicability, CITA observed. It is also surprising to note that in none of the case, the SSE made full payment to any truck owner all throughout the year exceeding rupees 20,000. CITA also examined in detail the question as to whether transport contracts were subject to deduction of tax at source and with reference to clause C of explanation 3 of the section 194C of the act as also to the CBDT circular number 558 dated 28th March 1990 and 681 dated 8th March 1994 and held that the provisions of section 194C of the act were applicable to the contracts of transportation of goods and the SSE was required to deduct tax at source if the gross credited or paid or likely to be credited or paid exceeded the limit of rupees 20,000. Having found that the SSE's case was squarely covered within the provisions of section 194C of the act, the CITA held that in view of the mandatory provisions of section 40IA of the act, the payments in question cannot be allowed as deduction while computing total. The CITA dismissed the appeal holding that it is clear that SSE's case was squarely covered within the provisions of section 194C and it was required to deduct tax at source while making payments to the truck owner. The provisions of section 40IA are mandatorily to be complied with in the case a default and the question of existence of any reasonable cause has got no meaning. CITA held that the SSE was required by the provisions of the act to deduct tax on freight payment totaling to rupees 57,11,625. Since the SSE failed to deduct at source, the sum of rupees 57,11,625 was rightly disallowed by the AO invoking the provisions of section 40AIA of the act, the CITA held. Now, I shall be discussing with you that what happened before ITAD agreed again by the order of the CIDA, the SSE approach, the IDAD Jodhpur. This appeal was dismissed by ADAD by way of its order dated 29th August 2008. The IDAD pointed out that by an application dated 16th July 2008, the SSE sought permission to produce additional evidence that is the agreement dated 1st April 2003 executed between itself and Grassim Industries Limited. And as the department had no objection, this same was admitted as additional evidence. IDAD found that agreement in question was on principle to principle basis, whereby the SSE was awarded the work of transporting cement from Sambupura, but as the SSE did not own any trucks it engaged the services of other truck operators for transporting the cement and such a transaction was a separate contract between the SSE and the truck owners. The IDAD endorsed the finding of the AO and CIDA by holding that the SSE was awarded a VOX contract by Grassim Industries Limited, a cement marketing division of Aditya Cement Limited. This agreement was on principle to principle basis whereby the SSE was awarded the cement transportation work and in terms of the agreement, the scope of the work was to include placement of trucks for cement transportation from their plant on regular basis in the state of Rajasthan. In case the SSE failed to provide trucks as per the contractual obligation, the company was free to hire trucks from market at prevailing prices and the amount of expenses incurred if any was to be debited to the SSE's account, terming him to be a transporter. SSE merely acted as an independent contractor while carrying on the efforts at work contract awarded to it by Grassim Industries Limited. Admittedly, the SSE did not own trucks of its own for carrying out such transportation contract 
and has engaged the services of other truck owners for lifting goods from the premises of Gasim Industries Limited and transporting the same to various sites in Rajasthan. Goods received or bilti were prepared and the same was to be taken as a contract between the SSE and such truck owners ITAT held. A clarification to this effect given by board circular number 715 dated 8 August 95 has been brought to the record by the revenue and is strongly relied upon by the assessing officer as well so as to consider the goods carried under particular goods receipt or bilti as a separate contract. The assignment of such contract by the SSE to the truck operators was rightly taken as a subcontract for carrying out the job awarded to the SSE by Gasim Industries Limited, ITAT Health. Provisions of Section 194C were duly attracted to such payments which have been made, credited or was likely to be paid on account of obligation under each goods receipt. The AO has found that the payments made and credited with respect to each of such contract involving aggregate payment of rupees 20,000 on a particular day amounted to rupees 57,11,625. In the light of clear provisions contained in section 194C of the Act and having regard to the fact that both the amounts actually paid or credited or likely to be paid on account of each contract exceeded rupees 20,000 on a single day. Section 194C has rightly found applicable. ITAT held that it did not find any wrong committed by learned CIDA in holding that the SSG has committed default in making deduction with respect to payments aggregating to rupees 57 lakh without deduction of tax at sort. The ITAT also negated the argument of the SSG that by the time of the issuance of circular number 5 dated 15 July 2005, the time for payment of tax at source had expired and that section 40AIA would only be applicable from AY 2006-7 and not from AY 2005 The IDAD further rejected the contention that the amount of expenditure was not charged to P&L account and only commission was shown as income. The IDAD observed that mere reflection in two different account books would not qualify for distinct and different treatment since both freight paid and freight charged partake the same character. The IDAD dismissed the appeal. Now, I shall be discussing with you what happened before Honorable High Court. In this case, that is Civil Appeal Number 7865 Stroke 2009 in the case of Sri Chaudhary Transport Company versus IDO decided on 29 July 2020 by Honorable Supreme Court on the issue of deduction of TDS on payment to transporter and related disallowance of expenses. Aggrieved yet again, the SSE approached the High Court against the order passed by the ITAD. However, the appeals of file was dismissed summarily by the High Court by its short order dated 15 May 2009 holding that on the language of section 194C2 and the fact that the goods received were sent through truck owners by the SSE and there was no privity of direct contract between the truck owners and the cement factory. According to the contract between the SSE and the cement factory, it was the SSE's responsibility to transport the cement and for that, the SSE hired the services of truck owners, obviously as subcontractors. In that view of the matter, we do not find any error in the impugn order of the tribunal, the High Court has. The net result of the proceedings had been that the consistent views of the AO, CITA and IDAD that deduction of the payments made to the truck operators cannot be allowed while computing the total income of the SSE was also confirmed by the High Court. Now, I shall be discussing with you various arguments put forth by the SSE before the Honorable Supreme Court in this case, that is, Civil Appeal Number 
7865 stroke 2009 in the case of Sri Chaudhary Transport Company versus IDO decided on 29 July 2020 by Honorable Supreme Court on the issue of deduction of TDS on payment to transporter and related disallowance of expenses. As selling the order so passed by the High Court in summarily dismissal of the appeal as also the views expressed in the assessment and appellate orders, learned counsel for the SSE heard before the Honorable Supreme Court multiple contentions on the scope and applicability of Section 194C as also Section 40AIA thereof and argued that these provisions could not have been applied to their case. Learned counsel for the SSE has sternly argued that the provisions of Section 194C of the Act, particularly subsection 2 thereof, were not applicable to the present case for there was no oral or rental contract of the SSE with the truck operator whose vehicles were engaged to execute the work of transportation of the goods. It has been contended by the SSE that the liability under Section 194C2 would have arisen only if payments were made to subcontractor and that too in pursuance of a contract for the purposes of carrying whole or any part of the work undertaken by the contractor. The learned counsel for the SSE argued that when there had not been any specific contract between the SSE and the truck owners whose vehicles were hired by the SSE on freelance and need basis, the ingredients of Section 194C2 were not satisfied and the obligation of deducting tax at source could not have been fastened on the SSE. The Learned Council has supported his contentions against the applicability of Section 194C of the Act to the present case with reference to the decision of Delhi High Court in the case of CID versus Hardarshan Singh reported in 2013, 350 IDR 427, wherein it was held that when the SSE merely acted as a facilitator or intermediary in the process of transportation of God, he had no liability to deduct TDS under Section 194C of the Act. The main plank of the submissions of the Learned Council for SSE has been that disallowance under Section 40IA of the Act is confined to the expenses that are booked during the year but remain payable or outstanding and not the expenses that had already been paid. The Learned Council referred to the decision of the Supreme Court in the case of JSK Synthetics Limited versus Commercial Tax Officer reported in 1994 for SCC 276 and the definition of the term paid in Section 43.2 of the Act to submit that the two expressions payable and paid are of the entirely different connotations. The Learned Council has painstakingly Rever to the contents of the bill introducing the Finance Act of 2004 where the expression creditor or paid were used but in the provision as enacted the expression payable has occurred. According to the Learned Council, if the legislature intended to disallow the deduction towards the payments made and incurred, it would have used the expression paid which term has been specifically defined for the purpose of section 28 to 41 of the act. But the use of expression payable makes it clear that the coverage of the provision is restricted and in any case it is not applicable over the amount already paid. The learned counsel also attempted to draw support to his contention with reference to the contents of the proviso to section 40 AIA of the act with the submission that the meaning and the scope of the main provision is accentuated by the scope of proviso wherein the expression paid is used while giving out the circumstances when a deduction not allowed under the main provision could be claimed in the subsequent year. Learned Council contended that the scope of the section 40 IA of the Act 
cannot be decided on the basis of the scope of section 194C of the Act. Learned Council submitted that section 201 of the Act provides for consequences of non-deduction of TDS either at the time of payment or booking whichever is earlier and thus the said provision would apply to both the situations where the expenses amount has been paid or is payable. However, according to the learned counsel, the additional consequence of default as provided in section 40IA of the act would come into operation only if the alleged default is strictly false within the language of this provision which is limited to the amount payable. Learned counsel submitted that the scope of section 40IA of the act cannot be expanded beyond its, its language merely because as per section 194C, the liability to deduct taxes at the time of credit of such amount to the account of a contractor or at the time of payment, whichever is earlier. With reference to the decision of Supreme Court in the case of Institute of Chartered Accountants of India versus Price Whiter House reported in 1997-93 taxman 588, the learned counsel argued that when the words are clear and there is no obscurity, the intention of the legislature has to be inferred only from the words used in the provision. Thus, learned counsel for the SSE sternly argued that section 40IA of the act remains limited in its scope and does not apply to the amount already paid. However, being aware of the position that the substratum of such contention does not stand in conformity with the views already taken by the Supreme Court in the case of Palam Gas Service versus CID reported in 2017, 394 ITR 300, the Learned Council made elaborate submissions that the said decision in Palam Gas Service requires reconsideration. According to the Learned Council, such reconsideration is necessitated because of the fact that the taxing provision for disallowance has to be strictly construed as per the language used and there is no scope for adopting the so-called purposive construction. The change of word used in the bill, credited or paid, to the word payable has been ignored. The effect of the proviso making it clear that the intent of the main provision is only to disallow the outstanding or payable amounts has not been considered. The court has widened the scope of consequences provided under section 40IA of the act based on the scope of section 194C and 201 of the act although such an approach is impossible while interpreting a provision in a taxing statute. Learned counsel for the SSE argued in the alternative that the said subclause IA having been inserted to clause A of the section 40 of the Act with effect from 1st April 2005 by the Finance Act 2004 would apply only from the financial year 2005-06 and hence cannot apply to the present case pertaining to financial year 4-5. In support, the Learned Council referred to and relied upon the decision of Calcutta High Court in the case of Pew Ghosh versus DCID reported in 2016, 386 ITR 322. To supplement to these contentions, the Learned Council also argued that, in any case, the Finance Act 2004 received the assent of President of India on 10 September 2004. Hence, the rigors of subsection IA of Section 40A of the Act cannot be applied in relation to the payments already made before 10 September 2004, the date of introduction of this provision. In yet another alternative, Learned Council for the SSE referred to the amendment made to Section 40IA of the Act by Finance Act 2014, restricting and limiting the extent of allowance to 30% of expenditure and submitted that the said amendment being curative in nature and having been introduced to ameliorate the hardship faced by the SSE deserves to be applied retrospectively 
and from the date of introduction of subsection IA to section 40A of the Act, the Learned Council developed this argument by relying on the decision in CID versus Calcutta Export Company reported in 2018, 404 ITR 654, wherein Supreme Court has held the remedial amendment of section 40IA of the Act by Finance Act 2010 to be retrospective in nature and applicable from the date of insertion of the said provision. Learned Council for the SSE lastly submitted that the result of applying the provision in question to the entire payment practically leads to a highly incongruous position that whole of the receipt from the company is treated as the income of the SSE and taxed but without due provision towards necessary expenditure. According to the Learned Council, in such contracts, the annual income of the transport contractor like the SSE cannot be and is not to the extent of about rupees 57 lakh as sought to be taxed in the present matter. Now, I shall be discussing with you the various arguments put forth by revenue before the Honorable Supreme Court in this case that is Civil Appeal Number 7865 Stroke 2009 in the case of Sri Chaudhary Transport Company versus IDO decided on 29 July 2020 by Honorable Supreme Court on the issue of deduction of TDS on payment to transporter and related disallowance of expenses. On the other hand, the Learned Council for Responded Revenue has duly supported the orders impugned essentially with reference to the reasoning therein and also with reference to the decision of Supreme Court in Palam Gas Service. Learned Council for the Revenue has contended with reference to the decided cases that the concurrent finding of the fact recorded by the authorities in 1980 as affirmed by the High Court call for no interference for no case of apparent perversity being made out. Learned Council has further submitted that the SSC admittedly carried out the work of transportation by hiring the trucks and made payments to the operators while issuing an invoice, belty or chalan for every such hireling which constituted a separate contract or subcontract. According to the Learned Council of Revenue, in such dealings, the SSE was required to deduct tax at source in terms of Section 194C of the Act when making payment to any truck operator if the sum exceeding rupees 20,000 and the SSE having failed to do so, the provisions of Section 40IA have rightly been invoked. Learned Council for the Revenue made elaborate reference to the decision of the Supreme Court in the case of Palam Gas Service and submitted that the principal contention on the part of the SSE that the expression payable as occurring in Section 40IA of the Act refers only to those cases where the amount is yet to be paid and does not cover the cases where the amount is actually paid has been duly considered and specifically rejected by Supreme Court and the said decision squarely covers the present matter. The Learned Council of the Revenue argued that in the case of Palam Gas Service, Supreme Court having holistically examined the scheme of the provision in question, there is no scope for reconsideration of the said decision and this appeal deserves to be dismissed for the question sought to be raised as regard interpretation of section 40IA of the Act being no more res integra. Learned Council for the Revenue has further contended that the amendment to section 40A of the Act with insertion of subclass IA by Finance Act 2004 with effect from 1st April 2005 directly applies to AY 2005 6 and for the SSE having failed to deduct tax at source from the payment made to the subcontractors for the work of transportation 
deduction of such payment has rightly been disallowed. The learned counsel for the revenue also argued that the proviso to section 40IA of the Act as inserted by Finance Act 2014 does not apply to the case at hand pertaining to AY 2005-6 and hence the argument for curative benefit with the reference to the sort proviso does not hold the ground. Now, I shall be discussing with you the various arguments put forth by revenue before the Honorable Supreme Court in this case that is civil appeal number 7865 stroke 2009 in the case of Sri Chaudhary Transport Company versus ITO decided on 29 July 2020 by Honorable Supreme Court on the issue of deduction of TDS on payment to transporter and related disallowance of expenses. On the other hand, the learned counsel for responded revenue has duly supported the orders impugned essentially with reference to the reasoning therein and also with reference to the decision of Supreme Court in Palam Gas Survey. Learned counsel for the revenue has contended with reference to the decided cases that the concurrent finding of the fact recorded by the authorities in ITAT as affirmed by the High Court call for no interference for no case of apparent perversity being made out. Learned counsel has further submitted that the SSC admittedly carried out the work of transportation by hiring the trucks and made payments to the operators while issuing an invoice, belty or chalan for every such hiring which constituted a separate contract or subcontract. According to the learned counsel of revenue, in such dealings, the SSE was required to deduct tax at source in terms of section 194C of the Act when making payment to any truck operator if the sum exceeding rupees 20,000. And the SSE having failed to do so, the provisions of section 40IA have rightly been invoked. Learned counsel for the revenue made elaborate reference to the decision of the Supreme Court in the case of Palam Gas Service and submitted that the principal contention on the part of the SSE that the expression payable as occurring in section 40 IA of the Act refers only to those cases where the amount is yet to be paid and does not cover the cases where the amount is actually paid has been duly considered and specifically rejected by Supreme Court and the said decision squarely covers the present matter. The learned counsel of the revenue argued that in the case of Palam Gas Service, Supreme Court having holistically examined the scheme of the provision in question, there is no scope for reconsideration of the said decision and this appeal deserves to be dismissed for the question sought to be raised as regard interpretation of section 40 IA of the act being no more res integra. Learned counsel for the revenue has further contended that the amendment to section 40A of the act with insertion of subclass IA by Finance Act 2004 with effect from 1st April 2005 directly applies to AY 2005-6 and for the SSE having failed to deduct tax at source from the payment made to the subcontractors for the work of transportation, deduction of such payment has rightly been disallowed. The learned counsel for the revenue also argued that the proviso to section 40IA of the Act as inserted by Finance Act 2014 does not apply to the case at hand pertaining to AY 2005 6 and hence the argument for curative benefit with the reference to the sort proviso does not hold the ground. Now I shall be discussing with you the principal question examined and decided by the Honorable Supreme Court and whether section 194C of the Act does not apply in this case that is Civil Appeal Number 7865 Stroke 2009 in the case of 
Shri Chaudhary Transport Company vs. ITO decided on 29 July 2020 by Honorable Supreme Court on the issue of deduction of TDS on payment to transporter and related disallowance of expenses. My dear friends, following principal questions arose for determination before the Honorable Supreme Court whether Section 194C of the Act does not apply to the present case. 2. Whether disallowance under Section 40AIA of the Act is confined or limited to the amount payable and not to the amount already paid and whether the decision of the Supreme Court in Palam Gas Service v. CID reported in 2017, 394 IDR 300 requires reconsideration. 3. Whether subclass IA of Section 40A of the Act as inserted by the Finance Act 2004 with effect from 1st April 2005 is applicable only from financial year 5-6 and hence is not applicable to the present case relating to financial year 4-5. And at any rate, whole of the rigors of this provision cannot be applied to the present case. 4. Whether the payments in question have rightly been disallowed from the deduction while computing the total income of the SSC. Now, I shall be discussing with you whether Section 194C of the Act does not apply in this case, that is, Civil Appeal Number 7865 Stroke 2009 in the case of Sri Chaudhary Transport Company versus ITO decided on 29 July 2020 by Honorable Supreme Court on the issue of deduction of TDS on payment to transporter and related disallowance of expenses. On the question number one, that is whether Section 194C of the Act does not apply to the present case, the Supreme Court observed that in order to maintain that the SSC was under no obligation to make any deduction of tax at source, it has been argued that there was no oral or written contract of the SSC with the truck operator whose vehicles were engaged to execute the work of transportation of the goods only on freelance and need basis. The submission has been that the question of TDS under Section 194C2 would have arisen only if the payment was made to a subcontractor and that too in pursuance of a contract for the purposes of carrying whole or any part of the work undertaken by the contractor would observe. In our view, the Supreme Court held that the submission so made remain entirely baseless. The nature of contract entered into by the SSE with the consignor company makes it clear that the SSE was to transport the goods, that is cement of the consignor company, and in order to execute this contract, the SSE hired the transport vehicles, namely the trucks, from different operators. The SSE received freight charges from the consignor company, who indeed deducted tax at sorts while making such payment to the SSE. The Honorable Court observed. Thereafter, the SSE paid the charges to the persons whose vehicles were hired for the purpose of the said work of transportation of goods. Thus, the goods in question were transported through the trucks employed by the SSE, but there was no privity of contract between the truck operators and the said consignor company. Indisputably, it was the responsibility of the SSE to transport the goods that is cement of the company and how to accomplish this task of the transportation was a matter exclusively within the domain of the SSE. Hence, hiring the services of truck operators for this purpose could have only been under the contract between the SSE and the said truck operator. Whether such a contract was reduced into writing or not carries hardly any relevance the court held. This is an important principle laid down by the Honorable Court here. In the given scenario and setup, the said tech operators answer to the description of subcontractor for carrying out the whole 
or part of the work undertaken by the contractor that is by the assessee for the purposes of section 194c2 of the act the suggestion on behalf of the assessee that the said truck operator were not bound to supply the trucks as per the need of the assessee nor the freight payable to them was predetermined in our view court held carry no meaning at all needless to observe that if a particular truck was not engaged there existed no contract but when any truck got engaged for the purpose of execution of the work undertaken by the assessee and freight charges were payable to its operator upon execution of the work that is transportation of the goods all the essentials of making a contract existed and as i for said the said truck operator became a subcontractor for the purpose of this work in question again very important principle laid down by the honorable court here the ao cida and the ida adf concurrently decided this issue against the assessee with reference to the facts of the case particularly after appreciating the nature of the contract of the assessee with the consignor company as also the nature of dealing of the assessee while holding that the truck operators were engaged by the assessee as subcontractor the court observed the same findings have been endorsed by the high courts in its short order dismissing the appeal of the assessee we are unable to find any error or infirmity in these findings the court held the decision of delhi high court in the case of hardarshan saying in our view the court held has no application whatsoever to the facts of the present case in contradistinction to the said case of hardarshan saying the court held that the assessee of the present case was not acting as a facilitator or intermediary between the consignor company and the truck operators because these two parties have no privity of contract between them the contract of company for transportation of its goods had only been with the assessee and it was the assessee who hired the services of the truck the payment made by the assessee to such a truck operator was clearly a payment made to a subcontractor the court held learned counsel for the assessee has made an attempt to distinguish the nature of contract in palam gas service by suggesting that there in the assessee subcontractors were a specific and identified persons with whom the assessee had entered into contract whereas the present assessee was free to hire the services of any truck operator and in fact the assessee hired the trucks only on need basis the court held such an attempt of differentiation is totally baseless and futile very important whether the assessee had a specific and identified trucks on its rolls or had been picking them up on freelance basis the legal effect on the status of parties had been the same that once a particular truck was engaged by the assessee on high charges for carrying out the part of the work undertaken by it that is transportation of the goods of the company the operator of the truck became the subcontractor and all the requirements of section 194c came into operation the court held thus we have no hesitation in affirming the concurrent finding in regard to the applicability of section 194c to the present case the court held now i shall be discussing with you whether this allowance under section 40ia of the act is confined or limited to the amount payable and not to the amount already paid and whether the decision of the supreme court in palam gas service versus cid reported in 2017 394 IDR 300 requires reconsideration. In this case, that is Civil Appeal Number 7865 Stroke 2009. In the case of Sri Chaudhary Transport Company versus IDO, decided on 29 July 2020 by Honorable Supreme Court on the issue of deduction of TDS on payment to transporters and related disallowance of expenses. Section 40 AIA provides for the consequences of default. 
in the case where tax is deductible at source on any interest, commission, brokerage, or fee, but had not been so deducted or had not been paid after deduction during the previous year or in the subsequent year before expiry of the prescribed time in the manner that the amount of such interest, commission, brokerage, or fee shall not be deducted in computing the income chargeable under the profit and gains of the business or profession. In other words, it shall be computed as income of the SSE because of its default in not deducting the tax at saw. The object of the legislature in introduction of the provision like subclause 40 AIA had been to ensure a strict and punctual compliance of the requirement of deducting tax at source and ensuring compliance of the requirement of TDS. The court observed, it is also noteworthy that in the proviso added to section 40 IA of the act, it was provided that where in respect of the sum referable to TDS requirement, tax has been deducted in any subsequent year or has been deducted during the previous year, but paid in any subsequent year after the expiry of the time prescribed in section 201, such sum shall be allowed as a deduction in computing the income of the previous year in which such tax has been paid. The purpose and coverage of this provision as also the production therein have been tearsly explained by Supreme Court in the case of Calcutta Export Company, court observed. As per observation of the Honorable Supreme Court in Calcutta Export Company case as regards section 40 AIA of the Act, the purpose is very much clear from the above referred explanation by the memorandum that it came with a purpose to ensure tax compliance. The fact that the intention of the legislature was not to punish the SSE is further reflected from the bare reading of the provisions of section 40 IA of that Income Tax Act. It only results in shifting of the year in which the expenditure can be claimed as deduction. In a case where the tax deducted at source was duly deposited with the government within the prescribed time, the said amount can be claimed as a deduction from the income in the previous year in which the TDS was deducted. However, when the amount deducted in the form of TDS was deposited with the government after the expiry of the period allowed for such deposit, then the deductions can be claimed for such deposited TDS amount only in the previous year in which such payment was made to the government. Taking up the question as to whether disallowed under section 40 IA of the act is confined to the amount payable and not to the amount already paid, the court observed we find that these aspects of interpretation do not require much dilation in view of the ratio of the decision of Supreme Court in the case of Palam Gas Service. In fact, the decision in Palam Gas Service is a direct answer to all the contentions urged on behalf of the SSE in the present case the court held. In that case, Supreme Court approved the views of the Punjab and Haryana High Court in the case of PMS Digels versus CID reported in 2015, 374 ITR 562 as regards mandatory nature of the provisions relating to the liability to deduct tax at sort. The Punjab and Haryana High Court in PMS Digels versus CIT has held that these provisions to be mandatory in nature. Having said that, deducting tax at source is obligatory, Supreme Court proceeded to deal with the issue as to whether the word payable in section 40 IA would cover only those cases where the amount is payable and not where it has actually been paid. Supreme Court took note of the exhaustive interpretation of various aspects related with this issue by the Punjab and Haryana High Court in the case of PMS Digel's case 
as also by the Calcutta High Court in the case of CID Kolkata 11 versus Crescent Export Syndicate reported in 2013, 216 taxmen 258 and while approving the same, Supreme Court held as regard implications and connotations of the expression payable used in this provision that when the entire scheme of the obligation to deduct the tax at source and paying it over to the central government is read holistically, it cannot be held that the word payable occurring in section 40 IA refers to only those cases where the amount is yet to be paid and does not cover the cases where the amount is actually paid. Very important principle laid down by the Honorable Supreme. If the provision is interpreted in the manner suggested by the SSE herein, then even when it is found that a person like the SSE has violated the provisions of section 194C and 200 in the instant case, he would still go scot-free without suffering the consequences of such monetary default in spite of the specific provisions laying down these consequences, the court observed. In the case of PMS Diesels, the Punjab and Haryana High Court had extensively dealt with myriad features of Section 40 AIA of the Act, including the term payable used therein as also the proviso thereto, and expounded on the entire gamut of the provisions while making reference to the Finance Bill of 2004, introducing the provision and while also drawing support from the views expressed by Calcutta High Court in the case of Crescent Export Syndicate. Court has. As regards the interpretation of the term payable, it was observed in PMS Diesels that Section 40A IA applies not merely to SSEs following the mercantile system, but also to the SSEs following the cash system. If this view is correct, and indeed we must proceed on the footing that it is court held, which is very important, goes a long way in indicating the fallacy in the SSE's main contention, namely, if the payments have already been made by the SSE to the contracting party, the provisions of Section 40 AIA would not be attracted even if the tax is not deducted and or paid over to the government account. Section 40 AIA refers to the nature of the default and the consequences of the default. The default is a failure to deduct the tax at source under Chapter 17B or after deduction, the failure to pay over the same to the government account. Some payable only indicates the type or nature of the payments by the SSE to the persons referred to in Section 40IA, such as contractor. There may be payment to persons referred to in Chapter 17B, which do not attract the provisions of Chapter 17B. The consequences under Section 40IA would only operate on account of failure to deduct tax where the tax is liable to be deducted under the provisions of the Act and in particular Chapter 17b thereof the court held. It is in that sense that the term payable has been used. The term payable is descriptive of the payments which attract the liability to deduct tax at source. It does not categorize default on the basis of when the payments are made to the payees of such amounts which attract the liability to deduct tax at source, court has. We find the above extracted observations and reasoning which have already been approved by the Supreme Court in Palam Gas Service to be precisely in accord with the scheme and purpose of Section 40 IA of the Act and are in complete answer to the contentions urged by the Learned Council for the SSE. It is ex facie evident that the term payable has been used in Section 40 IA of the Act only to indicate the type or nature of the payments by the SSEs to the payees referred therein. In other words, the expression payable is descriptive of the payments which attract the liability for deducting tax at source and it has not been used in the provision 
in question to specify any particular class of default on the basis as to whether payment has been made or not, the court held. The semantical suggestion by the learned counsel for the SSE that the expression payable to be read in contradistinction to the expression paid sense merit and could only be rejected. In a nutshell, while respectfully following Palam Gas Survey, we could only iterate our approval to the interpretation by the Punjab and Haryana High Court in PMS Diesel's case. The court held faced with the position that declaration of law in Palam Gas Service practically covers this matter. Learned counsel for the SSE has endeavored to submit that the decision in Palam Gas Service requires reconsideration for the reason that certain aspects of law have not been considered therein and correct principles of interpretation have not been applied. We are unable to find substance in any of these contentions. The decision of the coordinate bench in Palam Gas Service on the core question of law is equally binding on this bench and could be doubted only if the view as taken is shown to be not in conformity with any binding decision of the larger bench or any statutory provision or any other reason of the like nature. We find none. The court held a close look at the decision of PMS Diesel's case which has totally been approved by this court in Palam Gas Service case makes it clear that therein every aspect of the matter from a wide range of angles was examined by the Punjab and Haryana High Court while drawing support from the decisions of other High Courts, particularly that of the Calcutta High Court in the case of Crescent Export Syndicate. We are in respectful agreement with the observation in Palam Gas Service that the enunciations in PMS details had been of correct interpretation of the provisions contained in section 40 IA of the act. The court held the decision in Palam Gas Service covers the entire matter and the said decision in our view the court said does not require any reconsideration. The court held that being the position the contention urged on behalf of the SSE that disallowance under section 40 IA does not relate to the amount already paid stands rejected. The court held. Another contention in regard to section 40 IA of the act that its scope cannot be decided on the basis of section 194C has only been noted to be rejected. The interplay of these provisions is not far to seek where section 40 IA is not a standalone provision but provides one of those additional consequences as indicated in section 201 of the act for default by a person in compliance of the requirements of the provisions contained in part B of the chapter 17 of the act. The scheme of these provisions makes it clear that the default in compliance of the requirements of the provisions contained in part B of chapter 17 of the act that carries section 194 C 200 and 201 leads inter alia to the consequences of section 40 IA of the act. Hence the contours of the section 40 IA of the act could be aptly defined only with reference to the requirement of the provisions contained in part B of chapter 17 of the act including section 194 C 200 and 201. Putting it differently. When the obligation of section 194C of the act is the foundation of the consequences provided by section 40AIA of the act, reference to the former is inevitable in interpretation of the latter. In view of the above reference to the definition of the term paid in section 43.2 of the act is of no assistance to the SSE court head. Similarly, the observation in the case of JK Synthetics case as regard the difference in connotation of the expression payable and paid in the context of the liability to pay interest on the tax payable under the Rajasthan Sale Tax Act 1954 has no correlation whatsoever to the present case the court held. Further, when it is found 
that the process of interpretation of section 40A IA of the act in PMS Diesel's case as approved by the Supreme Court in Palam Gas Service case had been with due application of the relevant principles reference to the decision of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of India on the general principle of interpretation does not advance the case of the SSE in any matter. Now, I will discuss the issue of subclass IA having been inserted to the clause A of section 40 of the Act with effect from 1st April 2005 by Finance Act 2004 would apply only from the financial year 5-6 and hence cannot apply to the present case pertaining to financial year 4-5. In this case, quite conscious of the position that the decision of the Supreme Court in the case of Palam Gas Service practically covers the substance of present matter against the SSE, Learned Counsel for the SSE has made a few alternative attempts to argue against the disallowance in question. The court observed the Learned Counsel submit that the set sub class IA having been inserted to class A of the section 40 of the Act with effect from 1st April 2005 by Finance Act 2004 would apply only from the financial year 5-6 and hence cannot apply to the present case pertaining to financial year 4-5. There is no doubt that in the case of Pew Gosh, the Calcutta High Court indeed took the view which the Learned Council for the SSE has conversed before us. The Calcutta High Court observed that the said Finance Act 2004 got presidential assent on 10 September 2004 and it was provided that the provision in question shall stand inserted with effect from 1st April 2005. According to the Calcutta High Court, the SSE could not have foreseen prior to 10 September 2004 that any amount paid to the contractor without deducting tax at source was likely to become non-deductible in computation of income under Section 40 and that the legislature being conscious of the likely predicament provided that the provision shall become operative from 1st April 2005. The court further proceeded to observe that any other interpretation would amount to punishing the SSE for no fault of his. The High Court further observed that Section 11 of the Set Finance Act inserting subclass IA did not provide that the same was to become effective from the assessment year 5-6. The Supreme Court observed the opinion of the Calcutta High Court in the case of Pio Ghosh that is admittedly the Finance Act 2004 got presidential assent on September 10, 2004. The SSE could not have foreseen prior to September 10, 2004 that any amount paid to a contractor without deducting tax at source was likely to become not deductible under Section 40. It is difficult to assume that the legislature was not aware or did not foresee the aforesaid predicament. The legislature therefore provided that the act shall become operative on April 1st, 2005. Any other interpretation shall amount to punishing the SSE for no fault of his following the judgment in the case of Hindustan Electrographite. On top of that, Section 4 relied upon by Mr. Agrawal merely provides for an enactment as regards rate of tax to be charged in any particular assessment year which has no application to the case before us. Section 11 of the Finance Act 2004 by which subclass IA was added to Section 40A of the Income Tax Act does not provide that the same was to become effective from the assessment year 2005-06. It merely says it shall become effective on April 1st, 2005, which for reasons already discussed should mean to refer to the financial year. There is as such no scope for any ambiguity, nor is there any scope for confusion. The Learned Council for the SSE has submitted that the revenue has accepted the said decision 
and has not filed any appeal against the same the court observed it appears however that the amount of deduction in the said case was only a sum of rupees 430386 and obviously the net tax effect in that case decided on 12 7 was on the lower side the honorable supreme court observed in any case the said decision cannot be treated as final declaration of law on the subject merely because the same has not been appealed against the court held having examined the law applicable with respect we find it difficult to approve the above quoted opinion of the calcutta high court particularly when it does not appear standing in conformity with the scheme of assessment of income tax under the act of 1961 and where the high court seems to have not notice the proviso to clause ia of section 40a of the act forming the part of the amendment in question the honorable supreme court held it needs hardly any detailed discussion that in income tax matters the law to be applied is that in force in the assessment year in question unless stated otherwise by express intendment or by necessary implication the court held in the case of cid west bengal versus istmian steamship lines reported in 1951 20 r 572 a three judge bench of supreme court exposited on the fundamental principle that income tax matters the law to be applied is the law in force in the assessment year unless otherwise stated or implied this decision and various other decisions were considered by the constitutional bench of supreme court in the case of karim tharavi three states limited versus state of kerala reported in 1966 60 idr 262 and the principles were laid down that it is well settled that the income tax act as it is stands amended on the first day of the april of any financial year must apply to the assessment of that year any amendments in the act which came into force after the first day of april of a financial year would not apply to the assessment for that year even if the assessment is actually made after the amendment came into force the high court has however relied upon a decision of supreme court in cid versus istmian steamship lines that it will be observed that we are here concerned with two datum lines first the 1st april of 1940 when the act came into force and second the 1st of april 1939 which is the date mentioned in the amended proviso the first question to be answered is whether these dates are to apply to the accounting year or the year of assessment they must be held to apply to the assessment year because in income tax matters the law to be applied is the law in force in the assessment year unless otherwise stated or implied the first datum line therefore affected only the assessment year of 1940 41 because the amendment did not come into force till the 1st of april 1940 that means that the old law applied to every assessment year up to and including the assessment year 1939-40 this decision is authority for the proposition that though the subject of the charge is the income of the previous year the law to be applied is that in force in the assessment year unless otherwise stated or implied the supreme court observed the facts of the said decision are different and distinguishable and the high court was clearly in error applying that decision to the facts of the present case applying these principles to the case at hand we are clearly of the view the supreme court held that the provisions in question having come into effect from 1st april 2005 would apply from and for the assessment year 2005-6 and would be applicable for the assessment in question putting it differently 
द लेजिस्लेचर कॉन्शियसली मेड द सेट सब क्लास आई ए ऑफ द सेक्शन फोर्टी ए ऑफ द एक्ट एफेक्टिव फ्रॉम फर्स्ट अप्रैल टू थाउजेंड फाइव मीनिंग दे आर बाय दैट द सेम वॉज टू बी एप्लीकेबल फ्रॉम एंड फॉर द असेसमेंट ईयर फाइव सिक्स एंड नीदर दे आर हैड बीन एक्सप्रेस इंटेंडमेंट नॉर एनी इम्प्लीकेशन दैट इट वुड अप्लाई ओनली फॉर द फाइनेंशियल ईयर फाइव सिक्स द सुप्रीम कोर्ट हेल्ड वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट द ऑब्जर्वेशन ऑफ कैलकाटा हाई कोर्ट इन द केस ऑफ पीयू घोष केस एज रिगार्ड द लाइकली प्रेजुडिशी टू एन एस एस ई इन रिलेशन टू द फाइनेंशियल ईयर टू थाउजेंड फोर फाइव इन ओवर व्यू द कोर्ट ऑब्जर्व डू नॉट रिलेट टू एनी लीगल ग्रीवियंस और लीगल प्रिजोडाइज द रिक्वायरमेंट ऑफ डिडक्टिंग टैक्स एट सॉर्ट वॉज ऑलरेडी एग्जिस्टिंग एज पर सेक्शन वन नाइनटी फोर सी ऑफ द एक्ट एंड इट वॉज द बाउंड एंड ड्यूटी ऑफ द एस एस सी टू मेक सच डिडक्शन ऑफ टी डी एस एंड टू मेक ओवर द सेम टू द रेवेन्यू सेक्शन टू हंड्रेड वन वॉज ऑल्सो इन एग्जिस्टेंस विच मेड इट क्लियर दैट डिफॉल्ट इन मेकिंग डिडक्शन इन अकॉर्डेंस विद द प्रोविजन्स ऑफ द एक्ट वुड मेक द एस एस सी एंड एस एस सी इन डिफॉल्ट द एस एस सी कैन नॉट सजेस्ट दैट इवन इफ द ऑब्लिगेशन ऑफ टी डी एस ऑन द पेमेंट्स मेड बाई हिम वॉज एग्जिस्टिंग बाई वर्च्यू ऑफ सेक्शन वन नाइनटी फोर सी टू ही वुड हैव ऑनर्ड सच एन ऑब्लिगेशन ओनली If being aware of the drastic consequences of default, that such payment shall not be deducted for the purposes of drawing up the assessment, the Supreme Court held. Apart from the above, significant it is to notice that by the amendment in question, clause I A was added to Section 40 A of the Act with a proviso to the effect that where, in respect of the sum referable to T D S requirement. tax has been deducted in any subsequent year or has been deducted during the previous year but paid in any subsequent year after expiry of the time prescribed in section 201 such sum shall be allowed as a deduction in computing the income of the previous year in which such tax has been paid the supreme court observed the proviso effectively took care of the case of any bona fide assessee who would earnestly comply with the requirement of deducting the tax at sorts it is evident that the said proviso has totally escaped the attention of calcutta high court in the case of pu gosh the court observed in fact the relaxation by way of the proviso to section 40a ia of the act had further been modulated by way of various subsequent amendments to further mitigate the hardships of the bona fide assessees that the said decision in pu ghosh case cannot be regarded as correct on law the honorable court held it is very important in fact if the contention of the learned counsel for the assessee read with the proposition in pu ghosh case is accepted and the said sub class ia of the section 40a of the act is held applicable only from the financial year 2005 6 the result would be that this provision would apply only from the assessment year 2006 7 such a result is neither and we said the court held hence the contention that sub clause ia of clause a of section 40 of the act would apply only from the financial year 5 6 and cannot apply to the present case pertaining to the financial year 4 5 is stand rejected the court held now i will discuss the issue of sub class ia having been inserted to the clause a of section 40 of the act with effect from 1st april 2005 by finance act 2004 would apply only from the financial year 5 6 and hence cannot apply to the present case pertaining to financial year 4 5 in this case that is civil appeal number 7865 stroke 2009 in the case of shri chaudhry transport company versus ito decided on 29 july 2020 by honorable supreme court on the issue of deduction of tds on payment to transporter and related disallowance of expenses the supplemental submission that in any case disallowance cannot be applied to the payments already made prior to 10 september 2004 the date 
on which the Finance Act 2004 received the assent of the President of India remains equally baseless. Court held. Again very important, the said date of assent of the President of India to Finance Act 2004 is not the date of applicability of the provisions in question for the specific dates having been provided as 1st April 2005, the court held. Of course, the said date relates to the assessment year commencing from 1st April 2005, that is assessment year 2005-06. Even if it be assumed going by the suggestion of the SSE, the court observed that the requirement of section 40AIA became known on 10th September 2004, the SSE could have taken all the requisite steps to make deduction or in any case to make payment of the TDS amount to the revenue during the same financial year or even in the subsequent year as per the relaxation available in the proviso to section 40AIA of the Act. But the SSE simply avoided his obligation and attempted to suggest that it had no liability to deduct the tax at source at all. The court observed such an approach of the SSE when standing at the conflict with law, the consequences of disallowance under section 40 IA of the act remains inevitable, the court held. In yet another alternative attempt, learned counsel for the SSE has argued that by way of Finance Act 2014, disallowance under Section 40 AIA has been limited to 30% of the sum payable and the said amendment deserves to be held retrospective in operation. This line of argument has been drafted with reference to the decision in Calcutta Export Company wherein another amendment of Section 40 AIA by the Finance Act of 2010 was held by Supreme Court to be retrospective in operation. The submission so made is not only baseless but is bereft of any logic. Neither the amendment made by Finance Act 2014 could be stressed anterior to the date of its substitution so as to reach the assessment year 5-6 nor the said decision in Calcutta Export Company has any correlation with the case at hand or with the amendment made by the Finance Act of 2014, the Supreme Court held. By the amendment brought about in the year 2014, the legislature reduced the extent of disallowance under Section 40IA of the Act and limited it to 30% of the sum payable. On the other hand, by the Finance Act of 2010, which was considered in the case of Calcutta Export Company, the proviso to section 40 IA of the Act was amended so as to provide relief to a bona fide SSE who could not make deposit of the deducted tax within prescribed time. In fact, even before the year 2010, the said proviso was amended by the Finance Act 2008 and that amendment of the year 2008 was provided retrospective operation by the legislature itself. The aforesaid amendment by Finance Act of 2014 was specifically made applicable with effect from 1st April 2015 and clearly represents the will of the legislature as to what is to be deducted or what percentage of deduction is not to be allowed for a particular eventuality from the assessment year 1516 the court held. On the other hand, in the case of Calcutta Export Company, Supreme Court noticed the above two amendments to Section 40IA of the Act by Finance Act 2008 and by the Finance Act 2010, which were intended to deal with procedural hardships likely to be faced by the bona fide taxpayer who had deducted tax at source but could not make deposit within the prescribed time so as to claim deduction. In the judgment of Calcutta Export Company, Supreme Court took note of the case of a genuine hardship, particularly of the SSE who had deducted tax at source in the last month of the previous year and observed in paragraph 18 that the said amendment 
of the year 2008 was brought about with a view to mitigate such hardships after reproducing the said amendment of the year 2008 and after noticing its retrospective operation supreme court dwelled into the position obtaining after 2008 where still remained one class of ssc who could not claim deduction for the tds amount in the previous year in which the tax was deducted and who could claim benefit of such deduction in the next year only and after finding that the amendment of the year 2010 was intended to remedy this position held that the said amendment being curative in nature is required to be given retrospective operation that is from the date of insertion of section 40iia learned council for the ssc has only referred to the concluding part of the decision in calcutta export company but a look at the entire synthesis by supreme court of the reasons for amendment of 2008 and 2010 makes it clear as to why this court held that the amendment of the year 2010 would be retrospective in operation the court observed thus the finance act 2010 further relax the rigors of section 40iia of the income tax act to provide that all tds made during the previous year can be deposited with the government by the due date of filing the return of income the idea was to allow additional time to deductors to deposit the tds so made the court observed however the memorandum explaining the provisions of the finance bill 2010 expressly mentioned that this amendment is proposed to take effect retrospectively from april 1st 2010 and will accordingly apply in relation to the assessment year 2010-11 and subsequent years the controversy surrounding the above amendment was whether the amendment being curative in nature should be applied retrospectively that is from the date of insertion of the provisions of section 40a ia or to be applicable from the date of enforcement a proviso which is inserted to remedy unintended consequences and to make the provision workable a proviso which supplies an obvious omission in the section is required to be read into the section to give the section a reasonable interpretation and requires to be treated as retrospective in operation so that a reasonable interpretation can be given to the section as a whole the purpose of the amendment made by the finance act 2010 is to solve the anomalies that the insertion of section 40 iia was causing to the bona fide taxpayers the amendment even if not given operation retrospectively may not materially be of consequences to the revenue when the tax rates are stable and uniform and in cases of big ssc's having substantial turnover and equally huge expenses and necessary cushion to absorb the effect however marginal and medium taxpayers who work at a low gross product rate and when expenditure which becomes the subject matter of an order under section 40iia is substantial can suffer severe adverse consequences if the amendment made in 2010 is not given retrospective operation that is from the date of substitution of the provision transferring or shifting expenses to a subsequent year in such cases will not wipe out the adverse impact or effect and the financial stress such could not be the intention of the legislature hence the amendment made by the finance act 2010 being curative in nature is required to be given retrospective operation that is from the date of insertion of the said provision a bare look at the extraction efforts said makes it clear that what this court has held as regards retrospective operation is that the amendment of the year 2010 being curative in nature would be applicable from the date of insertion of the provisions in question 
that is subclass IA of section 40A of the Act. This being the position, it is difficult to find any substance in the argument that the principles adopted by this court in the case of Calcutta Export Company dealing with the curative amendment relating more to the procedural aspects concerning deposit of the deducted TDS be applied to the amendment of the substantive provision by the Finance Act 2014, the court held. We may in the passing observe that the SSE was either laboring under the mistaken impression that he was not required to deduct TDS or under the mistaken belief that the methodology of splitting a single payment into parts below 20,000 would provide him escape from the rigors of the provisions of the act providing for disallowance. The court observed, in either event, the SSE had not been a bona fide SSE who had made the deduction and deposited it subsequently, the court held. Obviously, the SSE could not have derived the benefit that were otherwise available by curative amendments of 2008 and 2010, the court observed. Having defaulted at every stage, the attempt on the part of the SSE to seek some succor in the amendment of section 40AIA of the Act by Finance Act 2014 could only be rejected as entirely baseless rather preposterous the court held. It's very important. Keep watching this channel for more videos of your interest shortly. Stay safe and healthy. Bye-bye.